my God. Transformational thinking. I'm not sure the church has it yet. I'm not sure we understand what the Lord has given us. The Amplified Version of the Bible is much more instructive in verse number 2 of chapter 12 of Romans. Let me read it to you. It reads this way. Do not be conformed to this world, that is, this age. Do not be fashioned after and adapted to its external, superficial customs. But be transformed or changed, watch this, by the entire renewal of your mind. That's the target. By the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals, by its new attitude, so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. I wonder if we want to see in our own lives that which God says is good for us. The word of God here is very powerful and it talks about what we already know, that is the power of your mind. I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea today. This is not positive mental attitude. A lot of folk are confident, but in themselves. A lot of folk are optimistic, but falsely so. This has nothing to do with PMA or optimism. This has to do with the power of God, nothing less. The power of God. I, I always relate to the fact that we who are Pentecostals, we rejoice in the in filling of the Holy Spirit and we, we want people to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And I'm certainly for that. But how many know that the work starts after the infilling? See, y'all don't want to go there with me today. See? How many know that when you receive the Holy Spirit, according to Jesus, you are simply born again? And that's crucial. I mean, it's, 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 it's critical, but it's only a beginning. The Bible says here that once you've been born again, there's the real work starts. And so I'm concerned about Christians who go week to week, but there's no activity of the Holy Spirit in their life. We only feel the Holy Spirit when the choir sings as they did this morning. And, and we feel that surge of spiritual energy. But I'm wondering what happens on Tuesday afternoons. Is God any less or any different as you traverse in this world's environment than when you're here at 38th in Indiana? Because the real job of the Holy Spirit is not while I'm at church. The real job of the Holy Spirit is not locative to where I live. The real job of the Holy Spirit is an ongoing day-to-day -day working in my mind that Christ might become preeminent in me. <laughs> Hallelujah. We call those folks fanatics. Those folks who, who not only, let me tell you something. You know, there are actually people who don't only believe that God is real. They actually embrace what God says. I'm going to say that again. There are actually people who believe that what God says is applicable to their life. There are folk that believe that if God said, I'm a winner, I'm a winner. There's folk who disbelieve the world and believe God based simply on the fact that God said it. You see, we call it radical. I call it Christian. I say that we have misrepresented what it means to be a child of God. Call me a fanatic all you want to, baby. You don't bother me. I believe I can do. See, I'm, I'm serious now. I 
believe that I can do all things. They said, Doc, you just confident. Honey, I have no confidence in Horace Smith, but I've got super confidence in the Holy Ghost working in Horace Smith. I believe that God uses human vessels. Lord, if there's somebody you want to use, why don't you use me? I believe God can take a crackhead and make them an anointed vessel. God can take a crazy person and give them the right thinking. God needs somebody today that will simply believe what he says and begin to walk in the fullness of the word of God and stop pity-patting yourself and start believing what God says. The real issue of the church is the issue of how you think. I will tell you that I listen very carefully what folk talk about because you know your words come from your mind. Whatever you love, you talk about it. Ooh, hallelujah. I'm going to ask you what you believe. Just listen to you talk enough. I'm going to find out what's deep in your heart. I'm going to tell you right now, honey, uh, if Christ is on the inside, you will find a way. It won't even be deliberate. Can I preach this thing? If you love Jesus, you don't need a plaque on your back or a Bible in your hand. You can wear a bikini. And folk will know that's a child of God because there's something that's real about you that emanates from the inside out. It's not the outward appearance. It's the inner mind. Oh, God. It's the mindset. I've told you before, some of my friends who really know me, they at the hospital, they say, if you, if you, when he gets here, don't talk about God. Don't talk about spiritual things. If you say one word about it, we won't even get through with clinic. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, I've got some priorities, honey. I'm a good physician. I'm a better ambassador. You don't want to hear me. I'm a witness for Jesus Christ. I'm on assignment 24-7 every day of the year. I don't have to wait for Sunday morning to preach to nobody. i got it on the inside. If you squeeze me, my faith will come out. If you squeeze me, my belief will come out. If you talk. Hallelujah. You see, most people got a touch of God. I don't know what you got at the altar. I don't know what tongue you spoke in. But when God saved me, it started a revolution in my life. When God... When you, when you saved and really loved Jesus, if you try to hide it, it won't work. Because the minute you open up your mouth, no, before that, when you think, I told me the first service, I was in Baltimore, Maryland on yesterday and on Friday, I was coming back on the plane and they had updated me to first class, I'm in first class, you know, looking like I was first class material, sitting there by the window, you know, and the student said, what would you like to have? Oh, I'm, I'm fine right now, you know, sitting there just minding my business. And I sat there and I had my computer up and hallelujah, I started thinking about my connection with the Lord and I told the first service, I started thinking about Psalm 91. Stay with me. Renew of your mind. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't trying to be deep. I was just sitting there and I, and I thought, he that dwelleth. <laughs> See, these words in the Bible to me are not just what we read on Sunday morning for Sunday school. You know, I'm, I'm reading it. He that dwelleth in the secret place. Now they call those folk crazy because you believe that there's a place to be saved, but there's also a secret place. That's a place that don't too many folk know about it. It's an exclusive place based on those that have a connection with God where your mind says when I get in trouble I will run to my secret place. For he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. 